Hi all, this is Sarika Tulsiani and I would like to welcome all of you in today's session of logical reasoning on calendar concepts and questions. So let's understand the concepts of calendars. So let's start with the video. Now, when you talk about calendars, first of all, what comes to mind is a normal year and a leap year. Right? So normal year, when I talk about a normal year, it has how many days? A normal year has 365 days. So if I convert this into weeks, I will have how many weeks? They go, 7 days make a week. So what I'll do is, I'll divide 365 by 7. So what will I get? I'll get 7 fives are 35. 15 remaining. So this is 7, 2s are 14. So this is 52 weeks. But if you check, there is one remainder remaining. Okay, because 364 is divisible by 7. So there is this one remainder. This one remainder is called as one extra day, which is known as your odd day. Okay, so a normal year has one extra day or one odd day. Now, because of this one extra day, what happens is, let's say this year, if 1st of Jan comes on a Monday, next year, 1st of Jan will come on a Tuesday. Then it will come on a Wednesday. So, it keeps on moving ahead by 1-1 one, one because of this one remainder. However, if you talk about a leap year, okay, leap year, what is a leap year? A leap year is a year which has one extra day. Which is that extra day? 29th Feb is the extra day that comes in a leap year. So a leap year basically has 366 days. So if I ask you how many weeks are there? So again what you'll do is divide 366 by 7. So this will be 7 5s are 35. 16 remaining. 7 2s are is 14. So you have four, 52 weeks, right? But you have two remainder here. You have two remaining. So this two is called as two extra days or two odd days. So means what? This year, if 1st of Jan was a Monday and if it is a leap year, the next year, 1st of Jan will not be a Tuesday, but it will be a Wednesday because it will move ahead by two days. Okay, because leap year has 366 days and normal year has 365 days. So here you have one remainder, here you have two as your remainder. Okay, so this is the first concept of calendars. Achha, how do you identify whether a year is a leap year or not? If a year is divisible by 4, it is termed as a leap year. So, for example, for example, suppose if I give you, let's say, 1996. Is 1996 divisible by 4? Yes, it is divisible by 4. How do you check divisibility by 4? A number is divisible by 4 when the last two digits are divisible by 4. Is 96 divisible by 4? Check karo. 4 2s are 8, 4 4 is are 16. It is divisible by 4, so this year is a leap year. Similarly, 2004, last two digits are divisible by 4, so it is a leap year, it is divisible by 4. 2008, again it is a leap year. If you check 2009, because 2009 is not divisible by 4, so it is not a leap year, it is a normal year. Okay? Now, after this, the next concept for calendars is the concept of a century, which is very, very important. Now, in this case, I am not talking about 100 years because generally students assume that century means 100 years yoga. In this case, I am not talking about 100 years. Whenever the last two digits of any year Okay, whenever the last two digits of any year are zero, it is called as a century. For example, 1900 is a century because last two digits are zeros. So, I am talking about one year only, okay. 1900 to 1901, this is one year. But this is called as a century because the last two digits are zeros. 
एटीन हंड्रेड इज अ सेंचुरी सेवेंटीन हंड्रेड इज अ सेंचुरी टू थाउजेंड इज अ सेंचुरी ऑल दीज रिस्पेक्टिव इयर्स आर सेंचुरीज ओके नाउ वेन इज अ सेंचुरी अ लीप इयर ठीक है वेन इज अ सेंचुरी अ लीप इयर Normally, you identify a leap year by checking the divisibility by four. If it is divisible by four, it is a leap year. Otherwise, not. But a century is a leap year when it is divisible by four hundred, not by four. It has to be divisible by four hundred. For example, if I ask you about sixteen hundred, is sixteen hundred divisible by four hundred? Definitely yes. So this is a leap year. But if I talk about let's say seventeen hundred, is seventeen hundred divisible by four hundred? No. Seventeen hundred is divisible by four. It is divisible by hundred, but it is not divisible by four hundred. So this one is not a leap year. This is extremely important. So how does this help you out? How does this help? I'll give you an example. Let's say if I celebrated my birthday on twenty ninth of Feb sixteen ninety six. ठीक है? I celebrated my birthday on twenty ninth Feb because it is a leap year, sixteen ninety six. When will I next celebrate my birthday? My next birthday will not come on twenty ninth Feb seventeen hundred because you just saw that seventeen hundred is not a leap year. My next Hubbard day will come directly four years after that, so it will be seventeen zero four. So my next birthday would come on twenty ninth Feb seventeen zero four after eight years, because there is no leap year in between. ठीक है? So this is how your calendar works. Now moving on. Now let's talk about a span of hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years, four hundred years. Now, if I ask you that, let's say in a span of hundred years, how many odd days are there? What are odd days? By now, I guess you would have understood that odd days means whenever you form a week of seven seven days, whatever is remaining, that is your odd day. Whatever days are remaining, those days are your odd days. So the question is, hundred years will have how many odd days? So hundred. See, you know, every fourth year is a leap year. So generally, what do we do is we divide hundred by four. So you get twenty five. So generally, people assume that there are twenty five leap years and seventy five non leap years. But generally, this is not the case because when you count a span of hundred years, you just saw. That there, it is not necessary that it will have a leap century. For example, if I consider a span of sixteen zero one to seventeen hundred, this is a span of hundred years only. But this will not have a leap century because seventeen hundred is not a leap year, right? So because seventeen hundred is not a leap year, this one year gets eliminated. So instead of twenty five leap years, we consider twenty four leap years and seventy six non leap years. I hope this is clear. Why one year gets eliminated because we were considering the century also to be the leap year, but in this case, it is not a leap year. The century is not a leap year. So either say one year minus हो जाता है, and it gets added in the non leap years. Now let's understand the distribution. You have twenty-four leap years. You have seventy-six non-leap years. Now every leap year has how many odd days? We saw every leap year has two odd days. So twenty-four leap years will have forty-eight odd days. Plus seventy-six non-leap years. One non-leap year has one odd day. So seventy-six non-leap years will have seventy-six odd days. So total, how many odd days are there? It's seventy-six plus forty-eight. So eight plus six is fourteen. So this will become one twenty four odd days, right? Now you cannot have one twenty four odd days because you can form many weeks of seven 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 days. So what I'll do is I will divide one twenty four by seven. So this is seven ones are seven, fifty four remaining. Seven sevens are forty nine. Take it. The forty nine is taken care of. This is fifty four. So how much is the remainder? The remainder is five. 
So that means your span of 100 years has five odd days. Okay, a span of 100 years has five odd days. So I'll just write the calculation here that 100 years accounts to five odd days. Now, likewise, if I ask you directly, 200 years will have how many odd days? They go 100 years have five odd days. So 200 years will have double. That is 10 odd days. But 10 may say you can form a week of seven. So how many odd days are remaining? So it will be 10 minus seven, which is three odd days are there in a span of 200 years. Okay? It will not be 10. 10 may say you can form a week of seven. The remaining is three. So your answer is three odd days. Similarly, if I ask you 300 years has how many odd days? They go 100 years has five odd days. So 300 should have five threes are 15 odd days. But 15 again may say you can form a week of seven, seven. So you can form two weeks. So you can eliminate 14 odd days because two weeks ho gaya. So there is only one odd day remaining. So 300 years will have only one odd day. Likewise, if I ask you, 400 years has how many odd days? 100 years has five. So 400 will have five fours are 20 odd days. Okay, this will have 20 odd days. 20 may say you can subtract 14. So kitna baj gaya? There will be six odd days. But, but, Dekho, understand, in a span of 400 years, you will definitely have one leap century. So, for example, if you consider a period of 1601 to 2000, right, this is a span of 400 years. Now, in these 400 years, the centuries which you count are 1700, 1800, 1900 and 2000. But you know, these three are not leap centuries. They are not uh, leap years, right? Because they are not divisible by 400. But you know that 2000 is a leap year because it is divisible by 400. Means what? In every 400 years, you will definitely face one leap year, which is a century, right? So because of this leap year, there is one extra odd day which is added. So 6 plus 1 becomes 7. So the remainder is 0 odd days. So that means in a span of 400 years, there are 0 odd days. Because of this, what happens is your calendar repeats exactly as it is after 400 years. So let's say if today is 1st Jan, it is a Monday. Whatever calendar will be followed for the next 400 years, the same copy paste calendar will be followed for another set of 400 years. So after 400 years, again, 1st Jan will be today's day, which is a Monday. And the calendar for 400 years will be copy pasted as it is. So this is how your calendar works. I hope this is clear. So guys, these were the concepts of calendars. In the next video, we'll be solving some sums on calendars so that your concepts become absolutely clear. So until then, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care.